I'll show you what the rivet set looks like. It has that rounded feature that's recessed in there to round over the rivet. So now when doing these types of jobs, you have to modify your tooling almost <laughs> for every different model. So we had to machine down that shank so it goes down in that counter bore. We had to machine off that edge a little bit um, so to get closer to the edge on some of the other ones. And that's just kind of usual. This is a Chicago brake rivet machine. very nice sturdy machine this is for knocking the rivets out and then the old rivet gets held in this little compartment and again this is the rivet setting portion of it and is activated by this foot pedal so the foot pedal activates the knockout as well as is the rivet set and then of course it also has this drilling counter boring feature as well which again is foot activated and it's not just for clutches it's for brake shoes as well and just about anything else that you need to rivet aligning to So I'm going to de demonstrate riveting clutch lining material onto a clutch disc. We have one rivet in place. So what we have to do is we have to drill and counter bore the holes going around in here and then set the rivet in. So before we can do any of that, we have to make sure we have the right drill counter bore bit and the, the drop pin. And we have that set at the right level. The level you set by trial and error. I should say you sneak up on it is the best term to use. And once you have, once you're there, you place the rivet hole in the drop pin. That'll center it over the bit. And then you step down on the pedal. And then you check and make sure that everything went through okay. And once you do that step, then you go right to the rivet end of it. So we put our rivet in. The drill counter bore hole make sure it's in there very good and far use the bottom mandrel to make sure it, it you got the head good in deep into the counter bore and then we step and then we set the rivet and that's how it works so again this plate bolts onto the flywheel then um, the plate that bolts onto the clutch pressure plate is much thicker and a little bit different to do. So we'll do more drilling here. Normally I like to do two, one or two rivets at a time. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. So we put these rivets in over here so now we want to work over onto the other side. And we'll do those two. Because of the shape right in here, I'm going to have to give this a rotation. 
because that gets in the way of this rim here. If I don't. So those two look good. You also notice that I have two clamps and that's just to get the process started. Now that I have these rivets in, I can uh, take the clamps off. So now we'll move over here and set in these two rivets. So this is a Chicago rivet brake machine from sometime in the 1900s. It's really a good machine. You just can't beat this older stuff. It has really big, heavy iron construction and it's meant to last. So again, we get it set down in there good and then cinch it over. So now we can take these clamps off. You can maybe extend out to doing four holes at a time. But um, I wouldn't go any more than that. Sometimes your drill bit will want to sink in a little bit or your tooling might shift a little bit. So you just want to be aware of that. That's so why it's good to always check after each hole you've done. Okay, and we are zeroing in on them. Just a few more holes to go.
You also have to be aware of your shavings that can get down into your stops. So you gotta blow those out once in a while. That's just part of um, operating an old machine. rivets in now that I'm just gonna drill and counter bore the remaining ones as well. I'm also going to confess that I use a different rivet than what was used originally. So this is, I believe, a 7.5 rivet. That's what I use. It's still tubular, but it has a larger head. This is what was originally used. Same shaft diameter, different head style, and they're hollow. I don't know what the advantage was of why they did it this way originally, but these rivets certainly work perfectly fine as replacements. And the reason I do that is because I'm, I would have to develop tooling to use these special rivets, and then I would have to have these rivets made, and the expense of doing that just doesn't seem worth it. Now we're going to cinch down these rivets here. So again, we want to make sure it's being pulled down against the steel plate nicely. All right, and there we are. All rivets are set. Plates ready to be installed. One of the things you'll notice is we have this configuration of rivets. And as far as I know, the reason for this was because originally, very early on with 20 horsepower, there was a seam here in the material. And that was just to help to reinforce that seam. So now this is the movable plate. And it's a little bit more of a challenge to um, rivet on and all because of its thickness. And the other thing is, is that with these, I have to pre-drill and counter bore the holes and then rivet it on. I can't do it the way I just did that, um, the thinner plate. So what I do to counter board, counteract that is I have a plate and I can actually set that lining right into this and it holds it nice, and then I go around and drill and counter bore the holes. When you're doing these clutches, you almost always need a new center plate, because a lot of times they become worn and, and worn out and distorted and cracked, and uh, they can really suffer the consequences. So remember to get a new plate when you replace your linings just about every time.
Okay, so you insert your rivet like that, push it in as far as you can, and it protrudes in there. Then when you put it down in the machine, you want to make sure it's pressed down in there to make sure that the head's up. And then you press with your foot and you set the rivet. So we have a flat buck here and then this end of it is recessed to make the curled over look. best to do one or two at a time otherwise they just fall out on you or you lose track or some other problem happens it also gives you the opportunity to make sure that they're setting in nicely 